I'm here on USS Kidd on the Mississippi River. This 376 foot long ship used to house 330 sailors. Today we're going to talk to three Fletcher class veterans as well as the USS Kidd's ship superintendent. My name is Trebsler and these are their ship stories. So USS Kidd is, from my understanding, the last World War II fitted Fletcher in the world. Is that correct? Yes, there's four left, uh, and then the Kidd was not frammed, like they call it, fleet rehabilitation and modernization uh, during her during her career. Uh, so she was never structurally changed. She had stuff pulled off of her. Uh, but she never had the structure of the ship changed to take some of the newer, heav heavier weaponry. So we've been able to add 90 tons of equipment back to her here in Baton Rouge to bring her back to her World War II specs. Interesting. What sort of equipment would that be that you have been bringing on? Well, uh, this is before I got here, but Garrett uh, helped bring back uh, some of the uh, depth charge projectors, uh, World War II depth charges. Uh, 20 torpedoes. millimeter guns. 20 millimeter guns, okay. Uh, it came from, from Dutch Navy. The, the, actually, a Dutch ship came up the river, anchored here, and transferred the guns from that ship to the kid. Wow. But before that, they had to build uh, gun shields around it. So we had a couple of men that were handy about welding, and they built the gun shields. Then they mounted the 20 millimeters. So, not necessarily the 100% original kid, but as original as we're going to be getting. Correct. And that's kind of how the Navy operates, right? Like, you're constantly rehabilitating your ships, making them work out, so getting back to spec is really good. Correct. In fact, in World War II, there's there's an oral history. It's, it's just a one-source story, but uh, apparently after we got hit by our kamikaze on April 11th, we're in the Ulithi, uh Ulithi berthing and tied up next to a, a destroyer tender and Cass and Young who's one of our sister ships in the historic fleet now came alongside and they transferred our radar off of the mast over onto her so she could go back out she was less uh, less damaged and so they just they moved equipment from one ship to the other so so kid was hit by a kamikaze plane correct and she's still here so obviously it wasn't catastrophic but like what was what was what happened? What, what was going on at that point? How did that, what was that like? I mean, I guess is the question. I mean, obviously it was terrible, but I mean, what, what was the damage? Uh, what, where was it struck, etc.? cetera? Uh, Kid and her division mates, Black, Bullard, and Chauncey were all 90 miles east of Okinawa on picket station on April 11th. And they saw two planes dogfighting on the outboard side of the Black, which was starboard of Kid, a beam. And they held their fire because since they were dogfighting, they figured one might be an American or an Allied plane. And the planes drifted closer until finally they were right above Black, and one of them broke away and dove straight at Black. The other one kind of moved off to the side like he's clearing a field of fire. And they shot down the first plane, but while they were taking the first plane under fire, the second one came in, and they found out it was a, it was a trick. They were pretending to dogfight so they could get close in and not be shot down a good distance away. Uh, this pilot, Shigehisa Yaguchi, who was a Lieutenant JG in the Imperial Navy, uh, basically had Black dead to rights, but uh, at the last moment, he leapfrogged over the top of Black and put, him down, put himself down between Kid and Black to where if they fired and missed, they were going to hit each other with the five-inch guns. And he plowed into the starboard side of Kid, just above the waterline into the forward fire room, breached the boilers, killing all the men in that compartment, and his bomb went all the way through the ship and out the other side and detonated about 12 yards or so off the side of the ship. Did a lot of damage, killed 38 men, wounded 55. Wow. Uh, for, the, for the people who aren't going to be staying on board or anything like that, or, or just, you know, maybe just starting to get interested into in warships in general, um, 
what would be the one thing that you would say would be the big draw for them, like to come to USS Kid? Uh, what what is your number one A one selling point? Um, I would say being able to take a step back in time and be be as close to walking on board a ship that he served on that's almost one hundred percent identical. Um, so being on a ship like this, this makes my day every day of the week. Sure. That's fantastic. Uh, what about you, Gary? What would be your one big selling point for, for someone who's never thought about setting foot on a, any ship? What would you come to USS Kid for? <clears throat> I get a lot of questions about the five inch guns. Sure. Some, some of the men interested more than the women in the five inch gun. But uh, the women are impressed by the closeness of everybody where they live. And uh, the children, of course, they just take in everything. <laughs> and and they just enjoy getting on the 40 millimeters and cranking them around and raising the barrels and moving around. Stuff for them to play with. Play, they just play with them, that's right, and they're welcome to do that. They can play all they want. What do you think the value is of having something like a mainstream video game have your ship in it and have all the detail that we've put into it? And uh, what do you think the value is of that in terms of like getting people to get to Baton Rouge to see USS Kid. I think it's great because um, one of the th I've I've been here about twenty, a little over twenty years now, and giving tours and overnights. And the World War II era is almost becoming like ancient Greece to to kids today. Um, you don't have really a concept of it unless you're actually standing there on it. So for for people to be able to see the video game and get invested in the kid and and go through battle after battle with her and then be able to come and see the real thing and walk through the cramped spaces and feel the heat uh, from a lack of air conditioning and just see the the technology so different from satellite phones and and cell phones and computers uh, I think it's fantastic it's a it's a great way to make the ship relevant to today's generation How do you spell a video game? How do you spell a video game? Like, with a lot of what are Is that them things you, 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 that's the only two fingers you need? I mean, you're going to need more fingers for this one because it's on computers, so you need these oh. fingers too. <laughs> I can't spell that either. <laughs> uh, Frank, uh, tell us about your Fletcher. What, what were you sailing on? What was I say? Yeah, that all depends what year I was sailing on, because I, I got ten of them behind me. You had ten Fletchers behind no, you? No, not oh. Fletchers. Which Fletcher did you serve on? You was a, this one. The Dorch. Yeah, Dorch? when I went aboard it, the Dirty Dorch. Dirty Dorch. Okay. Why did they like, kiss me at the quarter deck. <laughs> Why did they call it the Dirty Dorch? Because it was dirty. Okay. Just dirty in general. You guys didn't keep it clean? And, well, they didn't have a chief to kick them. Ah, so you came on as the chief, uh, and everything chief went Ultimate, that's right. Went better from there. So what was the day in the life of, of Chief of the Dorch like? Well, I'll tell you, he wore four, three handles. Okay. He was deck division, first, second de uh, deck, deck division, two divisions on there. He had the, the uh, upkeep of the hull, and making sure that the upkeep of the and cleanliness of the compartments. When I was on board the Dorch, we used to... There was four or six tin cans. They had charge of that carrier. Watch that carrier, don't let it get hit. Okay. If you see one of them with torpedo weights coming at you, you better take that before the carrier gets it. So your job was to get in front of the torpedoes before to the carrier got hit? All the destroyers. Okay. Whoever sees that thing better take it. Wow. Because we can lose the destroyer and forget about the destroyer, but we can't lose the carrier. That seems pretty dramatic, but okay. Uh, well, they like, had to keep all tin cans filled, topped off at ninety percent every other day. Wow! And so, so keeping those things going is, is the big keep, deal. Yeah, you never knew when they were gonna stay full feet. I had to all take off after whatever is after them. Wow! So, um, did you ever have to do that, like get in front no, of torpedoes? No, no, no. Okay. The only thing we had to do alongside of a carrier is fuel at sea. Okay. That's when the, these things here were burning black bunker sea fuel oil. Okay. 
Uh, right. that's, that, I hear that that's some pretty intense stuff. Very like so it's, much so that it's it's, it's uh, solid at room temperature, right? It's dirty. Yeah. But when you get it all the, from the forward fueling trunk up on the old one deck, the last last time I fueled at sea was from the Lake Champlain. We were pulling into Valencia, Spain. We both of the ship were fueling, pouring, and then the yard goes. Each one going the opposite direction. Okay. And they pulled the fuel hose, eight inch fuel and hose out of the forward fueling trunk. The spray fuel and everywhere. And you talk about black bunker C all the way to the old one deck on the starboard side, and on the, all the way down the superstructure, down to the main deck, all the main deck, and all the way down the, the side of the ship. Wow. The hull. That's. That's Pulling into Valencia, Spain, the old man says, "All hands on on the on the pier. We're gonna clean this ship before Liberty starts." Wow. That, that and had to some take wise some guy pipes up and says, "Well, there's no chiefs out here to work. I want to see whoever said that, <laughs> but they didn't, never did find out who it was." <laughs> It's nice to see her back out at sea after over 40 years of being inactive. Really important because not only do you get to see these ships in game, but you can actually visit them in real life and see that they're actually real, they're physical. It's not something that the developers just made up and stuck inside a game. You actually come, come and visit, you can walk around and see how the sailors on those ships in the game actually lived. got a recording uh you told me a really really funny story about how you got on kid can you tell that to our viewers yeah yes i can i got on the kid uh maybe one tuesday night uh about 10 minutes to 12 last minute they uh told me asked me first they asked me that i want to ship over and i said well no no i'm gonna get out you know when i do my time they said well you need some sea duty and they said we'll find a ship to put you on this was in the morning by 10 o'clock so I thought it was going to take three or four weeks or longer. So I was all relaxed, but they called me up that day about 3 o'clock and said, hey, Leroy, we got a ship for you, the USS Kidd. It's docked out in San Diego Harbor, say, so you'll be on that thing tonight. We'll get your gear, gear together, be on that night before midnight. So I got on there about 10 minutes to 12, last minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I, when I got aboard the ship, I was shocked because where I was, Brownfield, at show duty, you had to have a starch and iron shoes shine. You know, it had to be pretty well squared away. I got on there most guys' beards, um, you know, uh, a rank of jeans on and things like that. You know, it looked like pirates, most of them. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> so I thought, and they had big knives on the side, too. And I thought to myself, hey, man, I don't have a knife. I can't get on that ship. Wow. But anyway, I get on the ship. And, and the next morning, I just get up. I finally say, finally, up to bunk down there that don't have a mattress on it. If it ain't got a mattress on it. See, then it's, there's nobody bunk. Sure. So I went down below and found a bunk, Miller bunk. And so I hopped in that thing and never slept with nothing, nothing like that before. But after uh, I was on there, the very next morning they come out in muscles. So I go out there and stand in line with a bunch of guys. You know, I didn't know who these guys was. I just joined a line of guys. And the guy who was calling the roll off, well, he never noticed that. He never called my name. I never said anything. <laughs> I learned one thing in the military, don't volunteer nothing. They don't say nothing, you don't say nothing. Wow. So, so when I asked the roll call, next, the next thing I know, hey, the guy just, everybody started scattering. So I just scattered, you know, just got lost in the crowd. So <laughs> that went on for about three weeks or so. Wow. And finally, I was down below one time, they were having a drill. And so some mean-looking chief come down there, you know, hey, what are you doing now? You know, where are your battle station at? I don't have one. And you don't have one? How long have you been on this ship? I said, for three weeks. <laughs> so he tells me, well, we got to find somebody to do it. So he goes and takes me to meet some first class, I guess, 
hey, this guy don't have a ballot station yet. You know, he got nothing to do. When he get over here in three weeks, what are you training for? Nothing. So <laughs> I didn't know anything. If you, if, the, if you don't train in port uh, before you go out to sea, once you go out to sea, you ain't going to touch nothing on there. Okay. So I uh, basically, he said, well, I say, be security. You know, I had a pretty good, I, th I think I had a pretty good marksman when I was uh, in, in basic training. Uh, so in a way they said, hey, you're pretty good. I see you, you, you did, you had a, you had, you're a pretty good marksman. So he said, uh, you'll be security. You walk the deck of this ship, you can four hours. So that's what I did. Was, once we go out to sea, you don't need anybody to watch the deck because you're out of sea. Sure. Then I did bread watches. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you spent your first three weeks on USS Kid. Yeah. Just hiding, basically, yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of like, fine. cool. I just, I'm here. Yeah. I work here, yeah, yeah, and then uh -huh. going away. Then, yeah. and then afterwards, they said, we have no idea what you're supposed to do. Yeah, right. Here's a rifle. Your, your security. Yes, yeah. That's really impressive. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that's amazing. Uh, I, I was also told before we got down here, and there's a reason we're standing where we're at. Uh, that's you in this in this picture, right? Yeah, that young guy. Please say that. You know, sure. That yeah, young, that, yeah. <laughs> this this young man is in front of what it looks like a, an Essex class uh, aircraft carrier. What were you doing? Well, we was getting ready to refuel, uh, taking our ammunition and uh, and food. Okay. Yeah, we did our Walmart shop, and I didn't see we pulled side of a big ship carrier, a small ship like the kid had nothing to give us because we run out of food. That's one thing on one of the small ships like here. We had. 280 men on there. Sure. Yeah, 15 officers yeah. and 12 chiefs. So you had to take on a lot of food, you know. Most of those guys was child hounds. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, we would put them on there and we would high line. They would throw a monkey fist over and we would bring big old bucks of food we would bring over there and, uh, and then take on our, our food and take ammunition. Wow. And so uh, seeing as, as you have a very interesting story on USS Kid, um, what would you say is the most like fascinating part of that ship, like in terms of just being a destroyer, a Fletcher class destroyer in the U.S. Navy? Well, that that, that thing, that, hey, that that's a good ship to be on. That thing, that thing would really, that thing would really, really, really throw out some throw out some fire. You know, if you, if you see one of those drills on there, we used to shoot at sleeves all the time. They would shoot at sleeves all the time. And basically, they 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 would they would tear them sleeves up. That yep. thing was pretty accurate. Yeah, those five milli, uh, millimeter guns. Uh, you know that thing would kick out so much lead it look like a bridge. You can walk on it. <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher did you serve on? There were many. There were 175 Fletcher yes, were. built. And I was on the Fulham okay. DD-474. Okay. Commissioned March 2nd, 1943. All right. Um, Fulham was, uh, I mean, obviously a Fletcher class, but what did she specialize in? Well, the Fulham was a flagship. Okay. We always carried a four-stripe Navy captain over the squadron, which was Squadron 45. And, and our job was multi-purpose. We shot out planes, ships, submarines, bombarded troop areas. Where were you guys mostly located in? Atlantic, Pacific? Well, we were commissioned in Boston. Okay. And went through a training period, went down to Guantanamo, Cuba, for the uh, shakedown cruise, as it's called. That was about six weeks of just all kind of intense training. We came back to Boston, had a few modifications, and then we went out on patrol in the North Atlantic, actually off of Newfoundland for a while, just about a month. Then we went to uh, back to the Panama Canal, back into the Pacific. This right. must was my second trip to the Pacific, incidentally. All right. Mm -hmm. um, what did you do on Fulham? I was a boatswain mate. Okay. I went on there as a seaman second in the first division, which was the division that handled the anchors and the mooring lines and the whale boats, and also had a, had a gun crew. And that's, a, that's really intense, it sounds like, a lot of responsibilities that you had. We did. Uh, I worked my way up. When I, when I got off the ship, I was a first-class boatswain mate, leading the, the petty officer in the first division. Okay. Um, how long did you serve on Fulham? Uh, I uh, see three, probably almost three, three months shy of three years, right. two years and nine months, I guess. A lot, a lot of action. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, we have last of it. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, thank you so much for talking with us. This has been very interesting. Good. Yeah, and um, I guess, like, if you had to give one fact about Fletcher-class ships, maybe Fulman in general, like, yes. what would be the one, like, really quick, interesting fact about your, your destroyer? Well, I think the Fletchers were good sea-keeping ships. They were easy to ride on. My ship before was smaller, and it was very rough and hard to live on, but the, full, uh, the Fletchers are very easy to live on as a destroyer goes. You know, the 300 men and the crew all jammed in down below in the bunks, but you get used to that. The thing is, we were all teenagers. To show you an example, in 1944, during the presidential election, they passed out the ballots. Everybody had to be 21 or older to vote. There were only 44 people on the whole ship that could vote. Out of 300? <laughs> well, yes. That's, 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 that's the enlisted men. Now they were chiefs and officers, too. Sure. Yeah. But they were older. I guess they probably all could vote. But sure. we, we couldn't vote. That's, mm. that's impressive. Crewed by, crewed by kids, really. Yeah, well, yeah. Ten, I went on board at 17, and a lot of us did. Just teenagers, really. And so we, we could ad adapt pretty good. We, we were always hungry and always sleepy and always wet because the ship, the, the sea kept blowing over the salt spray and all of that. And we, we were short of food all the time, never had enough food. That sounds about all, like a teenager. <laughs> exactly. The thing a teenager needed, we did not have. But yet we adopted, adapted ourselves to that. Sure. And so we, we made it. Right on. Well, thank you so much for your service, and thank you for talking with us. Oh, good. Everyone, this has been Garrett Lynch, and he's been telling us about USS Fulham, his uh, Fletcher-class ship here on USS Kid. Thank you again for watching. Good luck, fair seas, and we'll see you out there. <laughs> <laughs>